that gratitude triggers the happiness. We all know this intellectually, but what happens is when we forget this, as in we've not internalized this, the opposite of being grateful is to take for granted. If you're grateful for your body, you won't take it for granted. If you're grateful for your parents, you won't take them for granted. We have a propensity to take our safety for granted. We feel we're entitled to this, which is why this summer, from July 4th, and now this is almost being completed, to August 19th, a period of six weeks, our effort is to train ourselves to not take for granted, but rather to be grateful for our safety. And the more grateful I am, the more I will facilitate this for the person close to me, the person far from me. We just want me Chinmay Ananda has shared, it is through self-development, there is societal development. If I become happier than the people around me will, if the people around me are happier than the people far away from them will too. Our effort is to de-escalate bullying and then extreme bullying using a firearm to de-escalate this. My experience with working with young people for almost 20 years now is the effective way to do this is to live with them to teach them, to work with them. This is a methodology to de-escalate so that firearms are just not accessed by young people or access less. Now, in one of our final knowledge sessions, I want to accentuate how thoughtful our team is. Our team is made up of Lavinia from Raleigh, Nishi from Houston, Rachna from Atlanta, Ryan from Eureka Springs, and Varsha from Chicago. They have taken firearms and how it affects society, how it affects adults, how it affects young adults, and now what we're going to think about is how it affects oneself. When I use a firearm on, firearm on myself, the proper terminology for this would be self-harm or suicide. In our self-development maps, there's a very powerful and frightening term called Atma Ha. Ha means to destroy. Atma here means the opportunity to know who one is, to know what one is. So Atma Ha is the self-harm or the suicide of the opportunity to be independently joyous. But for me to be independently joyous, I need to be alive. I have to have a body. That's what precedes this. And I see such sadness and I see such spreading of this sadness in terms of suicide and how using firearms just escalates this. And that's what our team will now be elaborating more on. I try to focus on this in terms of big picture and the philosophy in our team, who's so smart and so sattvic, they do this in a personal way, the details. Team? Hi, I'm Vivekshi. Thank you so much. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to lead this, but you inspired me to give a couple of stories first with HG. Um, So throughout med school and residency, the thing they always pound in your head when they talk about mental health and suicide is number one, males are always going to be significantly more effective. Don't know why, but just something to know when you're dealing with mental health and suicide and firearms. But number two, um, the success rate with a gun or the success rate of suicide astronomically increases with a gun. So people who attempt suicide and have access to a gun, whether it's in their house or a friend, neighbor, or they know where a gun is, have an 85 to 95%
chance of succeeding in their suicide attempt versus only 4% of people who attempt suicide via other means actually successfully end their lives. So um, that brought me to the thought about my own personal story where when I was around 21, 22 years old, um, because of a long standing history of depression and me not personally speaking out about my own feelings, um, having the access to a gun and people not knowing it, I almost personally took my own life. And it was just because my state of mind at the time wasn't bad enough, but was bad enough to reach out for help that I used the gun to be part of the calling card of how bad I was feeling. But I was one of the very rare males who had access to a gun who was depressed and suicide who didn't go through with it. So that alone um, is really powerful, I think. Um, some other things I wanted to mention before we get into some key points was that data I find is the most important thing that we can have in regards to our ability to make a rational um, argument and to have a conversation back and forth with those who are very passionate and who may feel that they know the data but maybe don't and you can give them that data to really help them stew on it for a while and think about like wow maybe this isn't quite what I thought it was. So a couple of things that I think are important to know that are more of data points is that over half of suicides are completed with firearms. And in 2022, that was 27,000 people in the United States who killed themselves. So half of those people were suicide by firearm alone. And when you think about the success rates with, with the firearm, you realize, number one, how many people of those people who weren't using a firearm tried? That's really sad. And that talks about our mental health problem. If only 4% of them are successful and 27,000 killed themselves with a firearm last year, that means basically 400 or some 400 times or something crazy number 27,000 tried without a gun. And if they had a gun, think about how many more would have died. So it's an important thing to think about, even though when we talk about the data and what we understand so far, we don't quite have all the data, but it's obvious from what we know so far that gun and depression equals very, very, very high risk of suicide and gun or without gun and depression means very low chance of success, at least with suicide. Um, a couple other numbers that are really sad when we were talking about youth, especially it's why it's passionate for me, is the rates of suicide have gone up in our youth, especially the highest of everyone. So like the 10 to 14 year olds, there's been a 150 percent rate percent rate of suicide success in the 10 to 14 year olds over the last nine years. So just something to think about. And the last thing in the 10 to 19 year old age groups. Over the last six years, there's been 21,000 deaths from firearms. 36% of those have been suicides. So a third of 21,000 deaths in the age of 10 to 19 have been from suicide from guns. The other two thirds have been from someone else, unfortunately, or an accident with a gun. Either way, still the gun is very likely gonna be the end means to the problem. So some things to talk about regarding uh, the Giffords uh, website, if you guys have had options or opportunities to access that, as well as some other kind of mainstream media that discusses this a lot. The CDC has a lot of data on suicides and firearms, and the Rand Institute has also looked at this as well. Um, so just wanted to pick out a couple of key points that I thought were interesting. So first of all, um, kind of like we were mentioning, suicide has been increasing crazy since 1999 and hasn't seen a dip except for one time in 2019. Um, and it also has been worsening in all states, regardless of whether they have what we're going to be talking about, which is like red flag uh, laws or not. So that kind of gets into some of the debate that you'll hear if you start talking about this with people, which is there's two states that have really been studied well. There's Indiana and Connecticut. And they have found that both states actually seem to have an effect on the suicide rate, but the controversy comes in the data set sub-analysis, which basically so that in Indiana, they saw that red flag laws and emergency orders to remove guns showed an all decrease in suicide rate in Indiana, which really spoke to the advocacy for the mental health awareness. These red flag laws and laws that were emergency protection orders were a end product of people being aware and advocating for mental health and being vigilant about their friends, family, significant others, 
so that they could try to stop something before it happened. And I think that's a really important thing to think about when we're talking about what we're talking about, which is the advocacy for this. How many times in history have we heard people say, why didn't people speak up? Why didn't they speak up earlier? And that's what we're talking about here. We're, we've seen for a while now that guns clearly are affecting people's lives in the worst possible way for the most part. And we can either continue to sit here and say, it's not me that's being a part of that, so I don't have to worry about it. Or we can be those people who, terrible example maybe, but who were living in Germany and weren't Nazis and didn't speak up. You know, at some point, people are going to look back at us and say, why didn't they do something? And so I think that's why our community really has to be one of those people that thinks, yeah, I need to be me. So, um, the the controversy getting back to that was in Connecticut they actually found that unfortunately they had a higher total number of suicides after these emergency orders to remove guns from households that were at risk for suicide by gun they just found that unfortunately suicide numbers total numbers even went up in Connecticut despite these laws so this is where you'll get your naysayers pointing out like yeah the data doesn't show it but overall in the very short period of time that we've had to be able to analyze this data, it's it's overall showing good things. And I think this is, my wife would kill me if I didn't mention this to say that the most important thing about statistics is that to find a significant difference in whatever outcome you're trying to find, you have to have an astronomical population to study. When you don't have, when you only have 20 or 21 of these states currently over the last very few years implementing these kind of studies, you don't have the kind of data set necessary to be able to find the massive changes you want to be able to publish in your study at this stage of the game. But if we advocate for more states pushing these emergency protection orders and we tr actually get that change with time, we will have more data to hopefully show that places like uh, Indiana are going to see not only decrease the suicide by gun, but decrease in total suicides because of our advocacy and alertness for mental health. So um, a couple of things that Rand did point out, even though we really aren't seeing the depression and suicide numbers with gun access really yet right now, they are already seeing that mass shootings because of these emergency protection orders have dropped significantly. Um, a couple of numbers that I just thought were interesting. There was a study in California that found over the time that they've established these laws, they've prevented 58 potential mass shootings. Um, Research in Indiana said that one suicide was prevented for every 10 guns removed. Pretty significant number when we talk about medicine. Anything that's one in 10, you give that treatment because that's how powerful it is. So if we can remove one gun and, or remove 10 guns and save one life, you should do it. That's what the statisticians tell you. So um, I think I'm going to end it there and just leave with you guys all to think about something at least, which is that we're coming to the end of this part of the um, group process this year. And I think everyone that's here has a reason for why they're here. But most people who aren't here aren't affected by guns and don't have guns. And so they don't think about guns. But what I've found in my career is no one expects their son or neighbor or mother or father or grandfather to commit suicide until they do. And then they become an advocate. So let's be advocates before we have to be one of those people saying, I never thought it was going to be me. And start thinking about what can we do to help work like re realistically, what can we do as a group to actually continue this work of advocacy and actually have a real like tangible effect to decrease the risk of self-harm and mass, mass harm by reaching out to people who can actually make this change for us. Thanks, guys. All right.